Oh, maybe. Okay, we're going to be able to do that. Thank you. I don't know what I did. But good job, Jason. No, Jason, good job. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I will call the Sunset Empire Transportation District Board of Commissioners to order for Tuesday, July 27th at 9.07. And to start with, apologize to those on Zoom. We were having some technical difficulties and hopefully we've got it fixed. Uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mary, would you please call, please? Yes. Commissioner David Smith, I'm here. Commissioner Cromwell, I'm here. Commissioner Nino, here. Commissioner Alegria, present. Mr. Rivers? Here. Okay. Commissioner Reed? Here. Commissioner Romero? You're here. Here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Number four on our agenda is election of officers. Um, it's that time of the year we go around and we do new chairperson, vice chair, secretary, treasurer. I would open up nominations for chairperson. Thank you. And Tracy, since you've nominated me, I'm going to turn this over to you until after this is over. This program is over. Is there any other nominations? Okay. Hold on. Again. Uh, so, no other uh, nominations. I would uh, cast a unanimous ballot. Thank you. Get to do that. <laughs> we'll move on to vice chair. Nominations are open for vice chair. Uh, Charles. I do nominate Tracy McDonald, vice chair. Second. Rebecca. Second. I don't think we need seconds on this, but okay. thank you. Okay. Is there any other nominations? All right, Tracy, do you accept? I will accept. Okay, is there anybody opposed to Tracy being vice chair? Okay. All right, Tracy's vice chair. And we'll move on to secretary treasurer. Nominations open for secretary treasurer. I would like to nominate Deanna again if she would like to continue. I will. Thank you. Any other nominations? To vote. Okay. Is all in favor of Deanna continuing as Secretary Treasurer? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we'll move down to number five changes in the agenda. And I think the only thing we do have to add is the approval of grant agreement 5311, and we will add that to 11. Four under new business. Okay. And I know this grant was a minute. I know the grant fifty three eleven was just handed out this morning. Is that right? Yeah, it is. And um, kind of a last minute addition here. So, okay. Any other additions or changes to the agenda? 
I would entertain a motion to approve the amended agenda. I would so move. Second. Second. Pamela seconds. Okay. All in favor of amending the agenda. Aye. 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 Okay. And then we will move on to the approval of board minutes. And we do have, oh, I'm sorry, public comment number six, public comment. Is there any in the yes. public? Go ahead. So my name is Lila Gable, and I actually used to be a commissioner on this board for a long time. I have some questions, which I know that you're not going to answer today. However, I know, I know that you forced Jeff into resigning, and that certainly seems to have been okay. My question is, what responsibility is the board taking for themselves, and why were they not up to date asking questions about the financial? And because that's the board's main responsibility is the finances. And I, I realized that a lot of you were new. I know that I personally offered to talk with you, Debbie, if, if you needed to, and I'm sure that Kathy probably offered the same thing. However, you didn't do it. And it appears that you've been going to at least some of the conferences. I, I noticed in the last minutes that you all went to Sun River, so you've You've had the opportunity for training. And one of the things that SDAO emphasizes is, is board responsibility training. So it's been available to you. Tracy and Pamela, I know that you have certainly been there because I was there with you. So I would assume, maybe that's stupid of me, but I would assume that all of you partook in board training on your responsibility. Number one is the finances and making sure that the director is doing what they're supposed to do. That's your responsibility. That, that is it. And you failed on that. And I do not hear, I hear every, all this finger pointing, well, it's, we couldn't get this information. Why couldn't you? It's your job to get it. Your elected officials, you were elected to do this job by the public. And if you can't do it, if you're not willing to do it, get off the board and let somebody on who's willing to do it. I noticed that in even doing the um, director qualifications thing from and reading the minutes from the last month that Pamela asked some very pertinent questions and on maybe fixing fixing some of it. Instead, the board, the rest of the board said, oh, we're not going to, we're not going to change anything because we're in a hurry to get it out. Well, it would have been easy enough to make, to say, we're going to pass this as amended. That's very easy to do. Where she, she made even grammatical things and you, you all shot her down. I, I don't understand that. That's absolutely ridiculous. It's part of your responsibility to listen to all the input and, and um, pay attention to it. I, I mean, I'm appalled to see this happen again. I was there during the Cindy thing, and I was the one person who kept asking questions all the time. I kept, I kept getting shot down by the board. And I, so I know that feeling. So do your job or get off the board. Thank you, Lyle. Anything on Zoom? Uh, Charles. Madam Chair, for the record, Mr. <laughs> Hazen resigned. We did not fire him or push him off the board. Just for the record, thank you. Can you state your name, please? Yeah, um, I'm Bruce St. Dennis. I'm the city manager at Cannon Beach. And for several years, we've had a uh, uh, 
arrangement with the district to provide a bus within the city limits and uh, during the summer months and uh, we are funded for this year and was just investigating whether there's a possibility of um, we have the funding if you have a driver and a, and a bus if um, we agree we might be able to uh, continue that service or restart that service so i just wanted to check on the possibility of that or find out what the next steps would be and i think paul and i have talked about that and we are going to be getting in touch with you and a couple of the other county leaders good and set up some right. type of a meeting so great thank you thank you thank you bruce thanks for coming anybody else on i, I show nobody else in chat nobody else okay i will close public meeting and move on to the approval of board minutes we have I think there's three total we have from June 7th, June 20th, and June 27th. Do them separately? That's the board's. <laughs> you want to do separately? Do separately. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's start with the June 7th. That's the ones that are a little bit older, and Mary just passed those out. Would the board like just a few minutes to read them, or would you like Mary to read them? Well, maybe for the record, to for Mary to read them so the public knows what we're agreeing to. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Yes. Can, can we can we uh, ask that we can we entertain a motion first? Sure. Okay. You so making a motion? I'm okay. making a motion for the seventh. Oh, okay. am I supposed to say it now? Yeah. You can okay. Say. I make a motion to uh, for Mary Parker to read the minutes aloud. Okay because we just received them okay. for the seventh and Tracy is seconding. Okay. Okay. Anybody uh, disapprove of that? Okay, go ahead, Mary. Okay, this was the meeting um, that that was to approve the second part of the loan that we received from the law. So, um, Chair, I'm just, I'm just gonna read but, yeah. what happened and the motion, right. if that's okay. Chair, Chair Debbie Blue Smith presented the amended State of Oregon Department of Transportation Loan Agreement. Interim Executive Director Lewicki explained that this agreement includes another 505,000, which will be assessed by requesting individual draws based on our needs. Lewicki also said the purpose of this extra loan is to get us through from now until the beginning of the fiscal year in July. Interim Executive Director Lewicki explained that there are requirements concerning our cash flow. We will need to explain what each withdrawal is being used for and then verify that that was what the withdrawal was used for. Commissioner Allegria asked if we could start a new route with this loan. Interim Executive Director Lewicki said that this loan has a project end date of July 31st, 2023. And that, and that said, we will not be adding new services with this loan. Commissioner Nino asked if this loan Will be added to the original loan for the for a total of over one million dollars. Executive Lewicki said, "Yes, it is a one million loan, one million dollar loan to us, because there is a total of ten thousand in loan costs that will be taken out." Chair Schmidt said, <clears throat> "This way, we can take what we need to get us through." Interim Executive Director Lewicki said, "The loan will go into the fiscal year 2023 budget." So we will be scheduling a 2023 supplemental budget hearing once we have received a loan. Commission McDonald moved to approve the additional ODOT loan and to have the board chair sign it. Commissioner Nino seconded the motion. Discussion, no further. And then the vote was by those present and um, the motion passed. Four, four I, three excused. Okay. Can we ask questions or is it yes. too late? Okay. What I don't quite understand is it's good through July 31st. So if there's a remaining balance, does that mean we can't use it? So later on in the meeting, we are going to, um, Paul and I met with ODOT and they are going to extend that to the end of September. So we'll be approving Amended. The, uh, the amended later on the meeting. Are there restrictions on how it's used? 
the same as it has been. So same as the yeah. original. Same. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Mary, would you do a roll call, please? A point of order. Uh, Debbie, can you please speak up? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so this is approval of the June 7th minutes. Commissioner Blue Smith? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Nino? Yes. Commissioner Labran? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we move on to the June 20th special minute, special meeting minutes. I move to approve the special meeting minutes for June 20, 2023. Second. Okay. Deanna moves to approve the tw June 20th meet minutes and Tracy second. Is there any discussion? There's no discussion. Mary, would you take roll call? Commissioner Lou Smith? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Nino? Yes. Commissioner Allegria? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> And we will move on to our final minutes, and that's for our board meeting from June 27th. I would entertain a motion to approve. I'll second. Oh, no. Motion first. First. Okay, Tracy moves. <laughs> Tracy makes a motion to approve the June 27th minutes, and Deanna I'll second. Is there any discussion? I only have some corrections on um, spelling, so I'll give those to Mary later. Okay. Have a look. You know, the first one will be a little grammatical, okay? Um, on uh, page three, approval of the last sentence says previous meeting should be connected to the minutes. That doesn't make sense. Should be attached to the minutes, so that's part of the record. You see where I am? No, where are you? Okay, page three. And then you go, this is by line, next to the last line. Instead of connected, should be attached to the minutes. That, so it's part of the record. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to love you? Okay. Page three of the minutes or of the pack? Of the packet, pardon me. Of the packet. The packet. At the bottom? So you have approval of May 25th. Oh, item six. Yeah. Item six. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. Which is uh, one, two, three, four, and it has to do with understanding. Uh, Commissioner Allegri asked that the wages and benefits are not spread out in our each. Oh, I see how. Okay, never mind. Okay. Okay. And skip that. I misread it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I don't I just don't understand this, which may be my failing. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Maybe see. Okay, I'll just read it and you can do what you may on it. This is regarding the Columbia Connector. Um, Commissioner Nino uh, questioned the revenue received for the connector because that service had been expended, suspended in April. Kelly explained that this was a payment for the April ticket sales that had gone through Amtrak 
I didn't know the lower Columbia connector was through Amtrak. Is that right? They sell tickets and we sell, did we sell we tickets? We don't need the point. The point is uh, Amtrak. It might be too. The purchase your tickets for yeah. our bus through Amtrak. Well, lower Columbia as yes, well. Yes, you can. You could. You could. I didn't know that. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, you are off the hook. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Mary, would you take a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Bushnett? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Nino? Yes. Commissioner Allegria? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Okay. Move on to agenda item number eight reports from the chair and commissioners. Um, Tracy, I'll start with you. Um, not being able to be at Sun River uh, you know, for training, I have signed up for a class remake of the very same classes that Pamela and I started this board with uh, on the 24th, 25th in Salem. Uh, any others are welcome to come with me. I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay. Guillermo? Oh, okay, sir. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, I just wanted to present to the board. Uh, I'm in the middle of a transition. Uh, Beginning of the month, August 7th, I start a rotation with my uni SA 503 as a uh, contract specialist. And so I'm getting kind of getting things completed at my work site, uh, which is in chaos right now. <laughs> and so I just want to let the board know that. And, uh, I, I, and I apologize for missing some meetings, but uh, as a union steward, uh, I'm in the middle of the, what's happening at the building, and uh, so, uh, but but come my new position, I'll be more available. <laughs> thank goodness. Anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you, Pamela. In terms of, um, I I would like to have more training on the fund balance. I have looked up the definition of fund balance oftentimes, but it's really not applicable to what we do. Well, it mentioned that the board would receive training, but not on Sunset's uh, financial statements. And that I find problematic because what I have research on fund balance, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I'm just saying that it's not even comparable from what I have done in the research. Now we've had some very unusual figures and the fund balance and I would like if, if nothing else because the budget uh, that we have been training at SDAO one somewhat monopolized the last conference and two that they don't really go they go into the basics but I think I'll speak for myself personally the fund balance is what I find problematic and we've talked, well, I've talked about the parentheses, the minuses, that they have different meanings across different statements. One, has that been corrected? If not, is that what the progress is? And the, we've been told, and this has driven me crazy, QuickBooks and um, AccuFund, we've always been told when there's a problem, that it's the, the program. I admit that I don't understand the fund balance as I should and looked at the wrong uh, indicators of what was happening in the at the um, sunset. And I would like training on that. And I think all of us would. And if we could just focus on the fund balance, which uh, one has problems with AccuFund, and two, I think understanding of it because of parentheses, minuses, and some minus parentheses for one figure, which uh, flip a coin and which one you choose. And this is not a criticism of anyone, it's just a criticism. 
It's just a discussion of what needs to be clear. Thank you. And I'll go with you to sale. You, you want to come with? Is that September 25th, did you say? Yeah, we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get in touch. Okay. Deanna, you want to go next? Uh, I have no report, but uh, commenting on what you're both saying. So the training that you're going is... Uh, Basic word responsibilities, and um, they cover um, uh, the, con the financials, the... Uh, uh, responsibles. It touches on ethics, and um, touching. Yeah, I think I. I, yeah, I we we I all we all went before. through that course one time. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I was wondering about like more financial focus. If there is like, are we supposed to take courses from SDAO that are for us individually to read through them, or is there a way that we could get like a like a class? that all of us are present and it could be online. So what would be the best way to take advantage of SDAO's resources? So during my report, but we'll go a little bit here. Awesome. Al and I have been talking about doing workshops. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hoping that we can do within the next month with the new budget coming in, that we can have a workshop where Kelly can sit down with us and go over item by item what's going on and maybe bring John in, in if he's willing to do that. I would also at that same workshop so we can get two things out of the way. And Mary would probably be there anyway, but to go over some of these minutes and make them a little bit easier on Mary. She spends probably 50% of her time, especially recently, <clears throat> just doing minutes. There's got to be, and she's come up with some good ideas, Jason's come up with some good ideas. So I would kind of like to do a workshop where we discuss those two things and do workshops a couple of times a year or more often if necessary. Would that be considered public meetings? Since they are public meeting? meetings, but there's no pub public comment. Got it. All right, thank you. There'd be work sessions. Yeah, work sessions. Emily, go ahead. Okay. <coughs> I, um, my husband and I scheduled a trip from this August 7th to August 21st. This has been a year in the making, and uh, I have never missed a meeting in all my years. If you could do this after, I'd be very, very appreciative. We will, I'm sure we can do something because I was thinking closer right after the 1st of September. Thank you very much. So it's kind of what my timeline was, but okay, we can discuss that next yeah. month. Okay. Like August 7th. That runs through the 24th. And since I'm on that, um, I'm going to take, unfortunately, write that down, my computer on this trip. And uh, so any meetings you have, um, the ninth I can attend, but I'll be in uh, Timbuktu later on. Uh, so, and I'm giving you my cell phone. I have a little down here, and I perhaps I'll write the uh, dates that I'll be in Timbuktu, still in the United States, but uh, no. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you, Pam. Rebecca? Uh, I do not have a report, but I uh, uh, join others in uh, uh, the desire to have workshops um, pertaining to uh, financial um, uh, statements and understanding the SETD uh, financials. Um, I have already, you know, I feel that I got the uh, the information I needed from the general SDAO um, uh, board responsibilities um, workshop. It was it was very good, but I think it's it's too general for our purposes here. So I I'm definitely um, would look forward to. This workshop uh, that we identify first with financials, and then I know that there are others to follow um, uh, outlined um, through the RLS uh, review that could be beneficial for us. Thank you. Charles? Uh, I'm sure I have no 
report directly, but I do want to comment on a couple of things. I want to thank staff, particularly Paul, Mary, Jason. I won't leave anyone out. Uh, Kelly, uh, Stephanie, all those who are manning the shop, and keeping things going. I realize it's a tough job, uh, particularly for Mary, who's probably wearing six or seven hats. But I uh, appreciate the work they're doing and the help in what they're doing. I also want to comment on the fact that uh, I'm on this board because of, uh, I believe in public transportation. I, um, I'm technically retired, but uh, I stepped in because I think that the future is public transportation. And I'm a, I'm a sort of person that I believe that's if the problem needs to be fixed, let's fix it. But to throw darts at those of us who sit on this board out of our own time and our own energy without any sort of ax to grind or any sort of plan or manipulation of plans. Uh, we all do this because we, we love the district and we love public transportation. And we could be doing something else with our time, but we, we, we do this because we love this. And I just want those to understand that I'm here for the uh, duration to get this fixed. And those of us who think we should not be on this board, there's an election coming up and I'd be welcome you to go ahead and get into the race and run against us or, and uh, do that. But uh, I'm more of a positive move forward guy than a uh, look backwards on name blaming and such. And I want to put that on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Um, so we've talked about the workshops. We'll get some dates together and see what we can come up with that works with everybody. Um, I attended the Northwest Act meeting on the 13th in Skatkoos. I have talked with um, Elk Creek Apartments staff. They've got a lot of people that live down in those apartments that are trying to get back and forth to work. So they are doing a survey to see what their people actually need and if we can do something. And that's where um, Bruce from Cannon Beach, I think can be some help with us on that. Where are they? I'm sorry? Where are they? Cannon Beach. Oh, they are? The low income apartments in Cannon Beach. How much street? They're by the RV resort, second exit. On the east side. Okay. And there is a bus stop like within about a block of the apartments. So it's easy for those tenants to get there. So I've been working on that. Um, I had left Bruce a message and he did get back to Paul. So thank you. I talked to the county manager. Well, I also talked to the uh, city manager in Astoria and he's willing to help any way they can. Um, it's just hard to figure out where we can get these leaders in. Also talked to Don Don at the county again, and he's got some help. And I'm hoping that we can do a leader like like Dennis and Don and Scott and Seaside. Warrington was a little not sure how interested they are, but we'll get back with them and talk to them again. Um, Paul and I attended a meeting by phone with a bit concerning the second draw and extending that date out to September 30th. Actually, I don't know, it's not on our agenda because you guys have given me permission to sign those papers anyway. So we have signed that amendment for the 195,000. So we got that already. And then that amendment also extended that contract out to September 30th. So that's been done. Okay. and that. That money shows up when on the finance. It'll be this month. Uh, yes. Yes. In July. In July. Yeah, because we just got it early this week. Yes. Monday. Monday. Yes. So yes. next Monday. month we'll see it in the financials presented. Next yes. Month. So you won't see it on the um, on the dashboard that's in there today. It's not reflected on that because it was done after I had done that. And I kind of wanted to wait so we start to a new year for our workshop. So we've got a brand new set of books and our auditor's been here and he's been fixing some things I'm assuming. So hopefully our financials will look, reports will look a little bit better. Um, and I also had a phone call from the sheriff and he's willing to do, I don't know what the sheriff can do, but 
that we've got a lot of help out there. We just have to figure out where we can use them the best way to, to use them. Um, and I do have a couple of questions for Arla. So I am concerned about ODOT. We didn't get our second and third reimbursements, and that's for a different reason than some of these others. Columbia County hasn't got their third quarter reimbursements. And I have a friend on another transit board. They have not received their second or third quarter reimbursements. So that concerns me as far as what ODOT's doing. And I know we've been told that with the changeover and they didn't have people to do ask for it through the federal monies, is that right? Pretty much. And then I think we were also led to thinking that we were going to have our stiff money right after the 1st of July. We haven't gotten that yet. Are we going to default on our first payment? I can answer both those questions for you. Thank and you. the board. Thank you. So we are waiting for FTA to release the funds to do those payments that you were talking about for the second and third quarter. They are short staffed. They have a lot of people moving positions. So they are starting to release some of those funds and we are making payments. As far as the STIF, we probably should have never let people know that we were gonna be sending out the STIF payments as of July 15th because it takes our support analyst entering each one of those into office to assign an agreement number to them since legislation did not give public transit the the um, permissions to write our normal agreements for stif funds so we have to enter them into office by hand so we can make payments on those and then we were on continuing resolution for quite some time because the governor had not signed the, the ODOT budget because of the walkout and legislation. So we're looking more towards August 15th or so that those will be coming out. We have discussed with OTIP that, you know, there is a delay in getting those out. They're fully aware of that. Um, so they understand. So you will not do fault on your loan. Okay. And then one last question. We've got the forensic, I understand the forensic audit is then started. Yes. Is the company doing that? Do they do government audits? I don't know their credentials. I know that they are um, as they're signed up on the DAS price agreement, Department of Administrative Services for the state of Oregon, and they are a contract. They do governmental, financial, <laughs> forensic audits. Okay. Thank you, Larry. You're welcome. And that's, I think that's my report for this month. Pamela? Just a suggestion that you don't know the, what to do with the share. Uh, possibility is what's happening sometimes at night on the transit grounds. If uh, maybe the sheriff is not the right person, but a police department, but there have been situations I've been told that um, okay. we need to be addressed. I can definitely call the city and have them do a few more patrols down here. It would be the city of Astoria. Okay. Or is station. the sheriff over the city or what? No, what they're all in separate? unincorporated areas. Okay. Of the county. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we are to number nine, our financial reports. Kelly? Good morning. 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 Touch base on a couple of the things that I was going to touch base on. So, sorry. I know we do that now. Um, but yes, we are still waiting for our stiff payment um, and our reimbursements. Uh, I also, uh, like you said, our auditor was here last year. That's our regular annual auditor. Um, he was here to finish up our fiscal year 22 audit. Um, it's my understanding that he has everything that he needs. He did, um, you know, that's where he goes through um, 
and does the checks on like our payroll and our accounts payable. So he did that part of this last week when he was here. Um, so I'm just, I don't know how long it'll take him to wrap up that report. Uh, our plan going forward with that is that, as we know, our balance sheet is a mess. Um, there's GL pieces of it that, that don't match up. Um, that goes back to the integration of the system. Um, so I'm as frustrated as you guys are with that. I want it all to be right. I want it to, to be what it is. With our fiscal year 22 audit, we will be able to make all of the appropriate adjustments to all of that and start with a clean slate at that point. So that's our plan going forward. So I'm working with John, who's been back and forth to help me and the auditor um, to be able to resolve all of that and to be able to get that so that going forward, we'll have that. I'm sorry, what was the date you were? It's looking like probably 90 days before we get everything audited back and get all those adjustments processed. So there'll still be some times when you ask a question that we have to say that's a mistake or we're not sure. We're looking for 90 days from now, which is what, August, September, October, that those transactions will have been corrected and the reports will be accurate. So where does that leave the board in understanding the financial status each month of Sunset? That's part of the reason why I have done um, the new dashboard for you to look at. Um, it gives you what we expect our payables to be. I don't do I don't do all of my board reports until about a week before the meeting. So the first two usually our first um, AP week and our first payroll week within the month have been in that process. And so you can see that those are actual numbers. And then the next two are um, what we're expecting. And I, although it doesn't give you the entire picture, my hope is that it'll help you to know what to expect. Um, and then as we go forward and things are corrected and everything is appropriate, you can look at that information that I provided and see the next month that yes, we were within those numbers. They're never going to be perfect, right? But they'll at least we'll be able to see that this is what we were expecting and this is what actually happened. Um, so I'm hopeful that it'll give you a little bit of a future look along with a little bit of a past look so that we're getting a, a more um, clearer picture. Okay, and this may be lack of brain cells, but on um, page 11 with, with the dashboard, you have um, under monthly expenditures, 55,000 plus that has been removed. So what I'm saying there is that when you're looking at those um, available balances above that, mm -hmm. That that fifty five thousand dollars has already been taken out of that balance. So it's been paid. It's been paid. So it's not fifty five thousand dollars on top of. That. Okay, and so then um, the next forty thousand has been paid. Is that right? Same. Yes. Okay. And that should say actual, not projected. And so why are we paying taxes here? Thirty-four. Why? Are, why are we? What is the taxes? What are the taxes? Am I reading this right? That's withholding taxes to the state. Oh, oh to the for the employees. These are employee taxes. Yeah. Employees. It's the okay. payroll projected payroll with taxes. Okay. okay so, so what uh, still is on paid is the forty thousand at this point, right? There's. That projected payroll, 728? Yeah. Okay. And this is, a, I'll just put this as a general. It seems to me that payroll is all over the place. You know, it's in the um, fund balance, it's in the uh, expenditures, and I don't understand why it's in the fund, uh, the, yes, the fund balance. Exact answer for that. Um, and then you, we've talked about the parentheses. And, and so, for me, anyway, I don't have a clear figure. If I had to tell someone what is the figure of payroll 
and what have we paid, uh, and why why is separated into different categories? Maybe there's an accounting reason. If there is, it really, in my eyes, um, is not an accurate, a clear. There's a word clear liabilities in the fund balance. Payroll is separated out. Um, so it's the wages, mm -hmm. the taxes, and the benefits, and it, right. and it rolls up right. into. So that's clear on the expenditure services. side mm -hmm. sheet. But it's not clear to me all these other things that are in the liabilities. On the balance sheet? On the fund balance, which I don't understand why that's not an accounts payable figure where you could put payroll accounts payable, which is an understandable to me. Right. Uh, understandable liability. If payroll doesn't hit as an actual accounts payable because it's not paid as an accounts payable, it's a totally separate. Fluid. Mm -hmm. Fluid. Okay. And it doesn't, and it also pays out of a different account than oh, accounts account. payable. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the other thing is an accounts payable on the budget is part of materials and services like regular accounts payable yeah. are, and payroll is a separate piece of the budget. Can you put that in the notes? Because I'm not going to remember doing that. And then the big question is this, which may be all worth. Cool. So on the fund balance, you have the um, ODOT loan as an asset. Yes. Why what is it? You want? Oh, excuse me, 15. Why isn't the loan that we are paying on the liability side. What item number? Well, the the item the um, on the assets is um, a 1050. Oops, can't, 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 excuse me. Okay. It's there on 1060, right? As an okay. asset, but it doesn't okay. show as a liability. And I don't have the answer to that. Um, I'm still working on getting all of that input correctly when um, the actual bank account was set up within the system for the loan. Mm -hmm. It originally wasn't set up correctly. And so I was able to get that piece of it fixed. So that balance actually shows appropriately. Um, but as far as the loan pay repayment part of it, I don't think it's been implemented completely into the system yet. I'm working with computer works on that to get all of those things put in. I'm wondering as a, um, before everything's fixed up, is there could be a note that X number on the uh, fund balance, that X number of money is owed to ODOT, just just put it in as a financial note if it can't be incorporated. Do you want me to add it to the um, dashboard piece? No, I no. have to see it on the fund balance, because that's what you're trying to understand, because that's what's, what's going to be audited too, not the dashboard as far as I understand. Right, no, the dashboard won't be, but um, I don't know that there's a way to. No, if I might, the first place, we don't have a liability on that loan until uh, August 1st. We don't have a payment due until August 1st. So I'm sure that that will show up. This is June's business. We haven't even taken oh. all of the oh, advances okay. yet. Right. And the second thing is that, that, you know, a balance sheet is a balance sheet. There are rules that govern how it's designed and how it's supposed to behave. What Kelly is doing with the dashboard is specifically for the benefit of you folks and if you want to know each month what the balance owed on the ODOT loan is I feel it will be best presented on the dashboard if it's something that the whole board is interested in knowing and really that's what we're talking about we're in this bind because there was a lack of an awareness of cash flow with the organization this dashboard will tell you exactly what the cash flow is every month and if we put the balance remaining loan on the dashboard, you look there, that you'll know that right away every time. You'll, you'll know what the expenses are, you'll know what payroll's been, you'll 
know what the balance for the loan is and any other metric that you feel is important for you to know to, to do your personal analysis on the district's uh, finances. I guess I, not guess, I don't understand if you, you have part of the loan cash is like asset, that's clear, that you don't have, uh, if someone looked at this, they don't know that Sunset owes X amount of money to Oda. We don't know any money until August. Okay, so would this go on in August as a liability? I'm absolutely sure that it will show as one of our liabilities. I, I guess, and I'll just stop with this. I still don't understand. Okay, you put it on the dashboard, um, but why the whole loan is not a liability on the fund balance? In theory, not that it would happen, but in theory, we could pay that loan off before. I mean, before it becomes because this is from this is from June. Okay, we're going to just say we're in July. So in July, when I do the financials in July, that loan we don't have anything owed on that loan yet until August first. So theoretically, if we had the funding, we could pay that off before it becomes a true liability to show that we owe anything on it because we could have paid it off. So it doesn't show until we actually make that payment. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you want the OTIP loan balance on the, yes. do you guys want that on there? Okay. If it doesn't serve your purposes after yeah. a couple of months, if you let Kelly don't take it off. I this is for you, this trying. is to make your job easier. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that you can be comfortable that we're being transparent with everything that we're doing. Thank you. Charles, I'll be with you in a minute. Go ahead, Tracy. Um, And I just wanted to come in, that's, Great, you're shortening up the time frame. That makes a lot of sense, okay? And I I appreciate that. So, yes, and I and I would definitely like to see it on dashboard. Okay, Charles, you're you're muted. I, I, I like the dashboard. It's sort of an at a glance vehicle to look at things, knowing that if I really want to dig inside, I can find it in the, in the report or find it in the financials. But I like it there as an at a glance type uh, procedure that you can see something tangent right there. Um, I, I think that's a reason for the dashboard for those of us who aren't CPAs or accountants. Uh, but I, but knowing, having the knowledge that if I need to really look it up and find it, I can find it. So uh, I, I, I like to add that to it uh, because it, it makes it simple for us. Okay. So I did, uh, the balance sheet has always been messed up. And I think that's been one of our issues is it doesn't really show like the money market 1050 it shows a debit of five over five thousand dollars that was zeroed out totally in october of 2021 2022 so the numbers on the balance sheet really kind of don't mean a whole lot at all they won't and they once everything's fixed they will have meaning to them but at this moment in time they really don't because there's I can't I the only one that I know the balance is correct on is the ODOT loan Lewis and Clark Bank and that's because it's brand new um but like the payroll account uh, the payroll account balances to the bank balance that part of it is accurate there's something within the GL when it was brought over that is inaccurate. And that's the numbers that you're seeing here. So our, our bank accounts balance to the bank statements. They're just not balancing to the GL as they should. What's GL? The general ledger. Mm -hmm. So that's where, when everything's in, if there's um, adjustments and such. So it's, and that's what the auditor is working on 
in finishing up our 22 audit is seeing where those you know where those mistakes were from what our ending balance was um, when we got AccuFund. He's going back to look at all of those ending balances and what the beginning balances were that were brought in, and he's going to make all of those correcting adjustments. He'll give to me, and then I can make those, and then we'll have it accurate. Is the cash correct from the fund balance? What item? Yeah, I don't cash. Know. Uh oh, um, LC, the uh, 1020 LC uh, Lewis Clark Bank checking. Is that correct? That one looks very close, yes. I believe that account is off $5 and some change in the general return that account. <laughs> Given things. <laughs> okay, that's good. Could, could I just make a couple sure. of comments here? I, I, I'm watching and I've, I've watched the board for quite a while here. Uh, and I learned so much in the last couple of months about the district finances that I just want to maybe share this perspective with you. In the first place, the, the major activities in finance are paying AP or our vendors, uh, utilities, and that sort of thing, and paying payroll. And we do each of those two times a month except in the month that has the three Fridays that happen in the cycle, we may have three payrolls. Other than that, we do payroll twice a month, we do accounts payable twice a month. When you look at the reports that you get at the meetings, you have several different snapshots and you have one that you could use that isn't even here. And I think this is maybe adding a little confusion. The, the financial reports that Kelly provides you and has provided you all along is a snapshot of what the finances were uh, at the end of last month, at the end of business last month. Now, here we are, we're almost at the end of business this month. We've paid two payrolls, one will be paid tomorrow, but it's been taken um, out of AccuFund, if not out of the bank yet. And we've made two cycles of uh, accounts payable at around thirty-five or forty thousand uh, dollars each. And after you look at these for a few weeks, you see that our payroll, instead of running at a hundred thousand dollars like it used to, is running at between twenty-five and thirty thousand now. And our accounts payable, instead of being a hundred thousand dollars like it was a month or so ago when Kelly was trying to catch up, now our accounts payable is like thirty-five or forty thousand uh, dollars every two weeks. So th there's a pattern there and you can see it. But the last thing that you need that, that I think it would be helpful if you would realize is that we, have, we actually have two sets of numbers. Besides the dates, we have what the bank says and we have what AccuFund says. And there's nothing wrong with that except that it's confusing. When Kelly does a payroll in AccuFund, it takes that $25,000 and says, you don't have it anymore. Your balance is now $25,000 less. And that makes sense. Would you agree, Pam? Right. Yeah. But the bank doesn't know, uh, and it hasn't spent that money yet. We haven't transferred that money. We haven't done the uh, direct deposits. So the bank shows us with a balance of $25,000 higher than what adding fund shows. And now if you, if you filter that by the fact that what you're seeing on the financial reports is last month, so a lot's happened since, and then what you're seeing on the dashboard, if you look, Kelly has indicated on there, it says as of July 18th, and that's much more current. So now we've got figures, you can look at the end of June figures, or you can look at what Kelly's giving you on the dashboard, which is intended to give you a more current picture of our cash flow, which is what I think is where we need to be critically attentive. But, but recognize that even though this is the 18th and it's very close, we got $195,000 deposited in our accounts on Monday that doesn't show on anything that you have. So we can be saying, gee, after we do this payroll, we'll only have $9,000 left in our general checking account. That's what the numbers show. But we know Monday, we got an influx of $195,000.
So it's possible, and I don't know if you'd be interested, I don't want to confuse it further, but we can always give you the numbers at the board meeting that, that were accurate, the, the bank account numbers that were accurate from close of business yesterday, if you want, if you really want to be that up to date and that aware of what's going on. Because knowing what was in the general checking account on the end of July, at the end of July, really isn't relevant to what's going on today, especially when we have such thin reserves. You know, uh, we, we could have had funds yesterday that could all be gone today. But what, we're, what we've been dealing with, I'll never point that out until the next board meeting. Well, so I'm just hoping this gives you some insight as to maybe how you'd rather see the numbers so that you can, can be more responsible and more responsive to what's going on. Okay, I think in terms of, uh, I think responsible is the word I wouldn't use. What we're seeing, what we're basing decision on, the board has been basing decisions on, I'll speak for myself, is what's in this packet. With the dashboard now, we get another view. And yes, I would like to see up to date, because we got into this situation for whatever reasons, but there was no money. And uh, when all is said and done, the cause having no money is another issue. But to see, so I, you don't listen to me every month and go, what's this, what's that? So if you have, you know, you know we don't know, there's $195,000, exactly. right? So if you put it in the dashboard, maybe we look at both. I can, so what's in the dashboard is based off of the day in which I do my reports. Right. But since the 18th, we've received $195,000. So it's not going to reflect on my dashboard because it was after the fact. So what Paul's saying is um, the morning of the board meeting, I can go and see exactly what our balances are that morning. And part of my report can be giving you our general fund is this, our LGIP is this, you know, across the board, like they're listed here, but it would just be a verbal listing. You would you would have to write that down yourself in order to keep track of it. But it would show you then that there was $195,000 or, you know, whatever was, was changed in that time if there was money that was deposited. One of the catches is that the board pack has to go out a week before the meeting. I understand. And everybody who's going to join the meeting has to have a board packet. So that's the most current that could be in the board. I understand that. You know, I guess we've been a little touchy. We've been beaten up here. And so I'm trying to have that the board has a clear idea so you don't have to listen to me every month of what's in the balance. And, and just the day of the uh, board meeting, fine. So I think we also have to understand that the day of the board meeting, she does that, that's all nice and fine and dandy, but it also does, that would not show the outstanding checks that have not cleared the bank yet. This number, but this down here would this, help us with that. This number right here includes all of the checks that have been written. Okay, so that's all of that money out. This right here is where the on the dashboard the top available balances, mm -hmm. that's the money that we, not what we physically had in the bank, but what we physically had available to us. So that shows all of the AP checks that we have written is all taken out of that, out of that number so that um, that's what we had available at that moment. Okay. And just the last thing, and then I'll be quiet. I appreciate you giving so much time here, but I think it's important. This is the kind of a thing that leads to a misunderstanding. We, we got to all know that the figures that Kelly's talking about are the figures from AccuFund, not from the bank. The bank doesn't know what checks are floating around out there. If you want the bank balance, you could have the bank balance instead or two, but they're two different numbers. And just be aware of that. What you're looking at is either AccuFund or the bank and they will be different. And I tried to word it available balance as to what meaning what is available. Um, I don't know if, you, if there's a different term that you want me to use, but that was my 
Um, and then the expenditures I, I is what you know what we had actually spent, and then what was projected. So the ones that are projected, I said projected. That's what we were projecting that those AP that AP would be and that payroll would be. If if uh, let's let's get Rebecca. She's had her hand up for a little bit. Go ahead, Rebecca. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I think that uh, I, I feel confident that when we have our workshop, uh, you know, we can take a look at this. We, this can be a stepping off point for us to dive into this deeper, to make, you know, more, give us more time to work on this than this particular meeting will allow us. I do appreciate uh, both Kelly and Paul's uh, explanations on this. You know, ultimately we have to just choose one format. That's basically what it is. And as long as we all then understand that format and that, you know, uh, the uh, snapshots, et cetera, you know, if we all have the same, we're on the same page about how these uh, uh, reports are uh, manifest to us, then that's really, that's really all we need, you know, but I, I think that I, I would suggest that we go with what um, has been presented, the format that Kelly has presented us and, you know, consider it some more. And then, you know, if it needs to be tweaked, we can work on that in the workshop coming up. Thank you, Rebecca. Anything else on financials? Oh, I'm sorry, Deanna. Thank you. <clears throat> so I really appreciate the explanation on the different dates and like the different sources for the reports that are included. I do think that having like the financials that are prepared by uh, Kelly, they say June 30 then the consolidated balance sheet on page 15 of the packet says June 30. And I believe that the credit cards are also around that time. The credit cards are through June 8th. I believe it is. They cut off at the beginning of the month. So I, I really appreciate the, the dashboard, but it's confusing that the dashboard has information that's not June 30. If it would be possible to have kind of like two dashboards, since we are always approving financials for the previous month, it would be useful to have those that, that information kind of match so that we can actually see on the dashboard how it fits the consolidated balance rate sheet and how it all does for the previous month so that we can approve the previous month's financials. And then we have the dashboard sort of like, okay, this is the snapshot for where we are right now. And then that, but that, they should be two separate things. Okay. I think that would be useful to be like, okay, financials so that we can approve them and then where we're standing right now. And then that conversation of we just got money that you don't see there, whatever, whatever. Uh, then on page 12 of the packet, which is consolidated statement of activity, and this is June 30. So then uh, under revenues items uh, starting on 5201 Oregon STF funds down to item 5304 transportation options. So it says month to date actual and the budget, they're both zeros. So we didn't spend, we didn't get any money on those funds, correct? Correct. correct. But then I looked on the numbers on the year to date actual from last month and they're different. So if we didn't receive any money, why are those fund numbers different? So if I go back to last year's, last year's, last month, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this right. So then on item 5202, Oregon SCIF funds discretionary. So for this month, it says zero, zero. But then 
on the year today actually it says 191,948 and then last month that same column said 201,961. Then couple more down, item 5301, 5311, admin operations. On their year today, actually, it says 724,979. And last month, it was $714,021. So that's almost like a $10,000, $11,000 difference. And then further down, item 5304, <clears throat> excuse me, transportation options. The year to day actual, it says 80,281. And then for last month, it said 80,581, which is only $300, but still, there's a difference. So I'm wondering why we're getting those different numbers. When they should be, if it's zero, it should be exactly the same. It should be exactly the same. So that's three those, different ones. The others are the same as yeah, last month. <laughs> those are the ones where we're waiting on those reimbursements from ODOT. So th that's a an adding error. Those, when I pull this report out of AccuFund, it shows in that year-to-date actual number, it shows all of those outstanding all of those outstanding grants that we haven't received, it shows that as income, even though we haven't received it. Mm -hmm. So I had to take those numbers out and I must have added it correctly when I did it. So this were manually? Yes. Typed? I had to manually change those numbers because it, otherwise it shows that we've received all of that funding from ODOT that we haven't received all of our grant reimbursements. Does it show that it's received because you made the request for it? It shows that it's that it's received when I put it when I put the invoice in to show that I had a receivable and that this money was outstanding owed to us, it adds it in as money that's been received. So it sounds like it's doing a cash. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same or thing. Yes, it would be a cash because normally we would just get those funds right away and it would just not be a big deal, but because it's still outstanding, it's showing it in there as income received and it's not income received because we haven't received it. So if you're manually typing this and then there's uh, about $20,000 some, you know, plus difference between these different numbers, then that's gonna mess up the, the like moving forward because you typed it in wrong. And I can fix it. Please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to be so careful in changing those, you know, in, in taking those amounts away and making sure that I was correct on the amount that I had. Because when I, when I did the report and it shows, you know, that we had like, I don't even, I can't even remember the number off the top of my head, but I was like, that's not right. Why does it show that? And as I dig into the system, I can see it and it shows it's an account receivable, but it shows it as money received and it's not. So this one is incorrect. Is the one the end of May, was that correct numbers? That one should be correct. Yeah, that was, okay, so the numbers on May should be correct. But you're gonna get us a new one anyway. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, so, so would we, would we like next month? Would we have these corrected, or can they just be amended? Like, how does it go? Do you, that's up to you. Do you want me to send out one? I would rather have this page sent out correctly to us as soon as she gets them corrected, and then okay. it would follow on to next month anyway. Okay. If that's good with the board, thank you. I would. I, that's fine. Then on page 13 of the packet, uh, under expenses, item 8090, dues and subscriptions, $10,000 even. Uh, that's that's an odd so number. Dues, subscriptions, and fees. That is the fees. That's the um, that's the $10,000 loan fees. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't a fun number to put to see in there, but that's a $10,000 loan piece. Got, yeah, just that 
even younger. Right, I know, it's not very often that we have just a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um, I just want to clarify, on page 15, the consolidated balance sheet, this print from AccuFund? Yes. So you have no, like you're not inputting anything, this is just a report that the program does? Yes. It's a report okay. straight out of AccuFund. So then everything that is in parentheses is uh, like minus, basically, that we don't have it? On the top, yes. Well, everywhere. Like everything that's on parentheses means that we are on default, that we don't, it's not a, oh, the term in English, um, that we don't have it. So if it's 10 assets, 10, 10, over, under, and in parentheses it says 475, it means that we don't have $4. We were short $4. We're short, that's the word, thank you. That would mean that we were short $4.75. So then according to this, we're short on uh, just a lot of money, like a lot, a lot, a lot of money. But it's wrong, like we've talked about. This comes out of the GL, the general ledger. We are not, $72,000 negative in our payroll account. Yeah, that's what I'm right. saying. That is no, like... that's, that's what I've been trying to say about this report. The numbers that come into this report are not accurate. They were not accurate from the integration of the new system, from the old system to the new system. That's what's going to be fixed with our 22 audit when he gets all of those numbers figured out of what they should have been versus what they were and we'll make all of those adjustments and then these numbers will make sense. It'll show our, our payroll account with a positive number and it'll actually show the money we're gonna count and as do, more. And do you have access to like these items that are in here? I know this, this prints out of the software, but do you know the actual numbers, the correct numbers for all of these items? Do you have access to that information? I can look like the checking it. So like um, the money market account, I can tell you is a zero. There's no money in there. We closed that in October. So would we, would you be able to get an, an additional page in this like, okay, this is what AccuFund is printing, but it's not correct because it's out of whack. But these are the actual numbers or these are more clo they're closer to what it actually is. So. If we were to know that, yeah, the, the one that you just said, like the money market, it's not at that, it's actually at zero. This one is at this much. The payroll account, it's actually at this much. Like that would actually help us to be closer to the actual consolidated balance. So is, is that something that's possible? As far you? as the checking accounts go, I can give you what those, and that'll be on your dashboard. So if we have the two dashboards, we could have the dashboard for June 30 mm -hmm. and it shows show more of this. what the actual balances were in the account as of June 30. As and far as some of the other... liabilities and net assets, would you be able to also get some of those numbers? I can try to get those numbers. I don't know because this is a yearly snapshot. Um, hmm. I don't know that I can get it perfect in those numbers. Um, my best suggestion on that is sadly to wait it out with me and it will be accurate. Hmm. Uh, and could I, could I respond to your concerns a little bit here? I, I, I hope the board could see that if, if we go back to the, to the, uh, the uh, page, what page was it? 11. Page 12, where we talked about uh, the 5200 and 5300 items. And, and how we have changed those numbers that the system was giving us so that they would look more realistic because we had not received the money from the state yet, but the system wanted to say that we had. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're, we're adjusting what the, what the system is telling us because we don't like the way the system is telling us that. And now we're wanting to do the same thing with the balance sheet. This is what the system is producing and we already know the systems got some errors because of you know historic data but if we start changing all the things that are coming out of that system we're only adding another variable uh, what i would suggest in the interest of you really knowing what's going on is let the system say what it's going to say and understand 
you know, that, that $5,600 for that money market, um, even in the short time I've been here, I understand that for the first part of the year of it, that wasn't even on here because we had a money market certificate, but it was cashed out to get cash when we were short of cash. And that's how it ended up being a negative. It was nothing on here. All of a sudden we cashed it out. We diminished our assets by $5,600. And that shows that for the year on that line, we're down $5,600. If we start messing with that, we're going to lose our, our trail of breadcrumbs. Yeah. You know, better to let the system do what it does and have Kelly give you an explanation uh, on the dashboard or as you become more familiar with what's going on. Uh, and I agree with Kelly, let's let the system do what it's going to do, get the appropriate explanations for 90 days. Then if this thing is not accurate in 90 days, you know, then, then we got some red flags to, to, to run up. May I make a comment? Yes. So if it, when it goes to audit, that if there's a bunch of changes made that have no explanation, the auditor's gonna ding you for that because they're gonna wanna know why you manually made changes. No, I wasn't suggesting to make okay. changes to this. This report is the, the software report. Just a separate, a separate sheet explaining, but explaining by items, explaining like, okay, uh, item 1020 or item 1050 says this, but in reality it should be zero. Separate, not inputting those numbers because yeah, I, I agree. We need to keep that, let the system have that uh, continuity. But kind of like, because yeah, I understand Pam every month she sees it and she's like, what are these numbers? And every time we hear, well, yeah, they're not right. Then what is the right information? Then how much do we really have in assets? How much do we really have in liabilities? So I was just asking if it was possible to have a separate, separate sheet, separate thing, instead of just doing it verbally every month. But, but I think it's a bad practice to get into, to, to change these numbers and not, and not be able to hold the system accountable for what it's, what it's giving us. Okay. But I think we can work something like that out. Then, Hang on, Charles, just a minute. Then on uh, page 17, they say it's under our accounts receivable aging. So then items 61, 62, down, there's a, a few from Oregon Employment Department, and these are the bus passes. So uh, what what are these passes for? Please remind me. They give um, bus passes, monthly bus passes to people that need help, and we bill them monthly for it. Ah, got it. So this yeah. is from like WorkSource work or source. Yes. Yes. We have WorkSource ones. Yes. Allows mm -hmm. them allows them to make connections at employment department, and if and when you ever have a building, then they could come to your building. And then lastly, uh, on page 18, uh, item 6214 from Kilimanjaro County Transportation District. So is there a reason why, why uh, we still have uh, money owed from February? Like we skipped? I think that one just fell under their radar. I was in contact with Kathy last week about it, the end of last week. Um, for bus passes for them from February. And, okay. Uh, then on page 19, uh, this is a uh, accounts payable aging. The first item, 6001, this is active fund and it says cloud access to our chair, Debbie Blue Schmidt. Is this a one time thing or a continuous access? It's a continuous um, access. It just gives her access to be able to view just the access that we had set up for. Do I still need that? I think that's up to you at the board. Because we were never able to get me into it anyway. Yeah. And is this a monthly fee? No, it's an annual fee. It's annual. $40 annual for, yeah. And we can cancel it. 
let's anyway, it's an annual fee. Let's wait a couple of months, wait until we get all the audits done and then see if I really need it. Because I, I was never even able to get into it once they gave me permission. So Sorry, you only have access to view. You can't yeah. <laughs> and then uh, item six zero zero seven on that same page. All the all data, annual subscription of fifteen hundred dollars. What is that for? That's uh, a, a, a catalog that, that we subscribe to for our mechanics, and it's like it's like a user manual for all vehicles. So if they have a particular problem with a uh, yeah. Chevrolet bus, then all the information about that bus, part numbers, uh, repair procedures, um, all that is in there. It's a resource that we've renewed every year uh, and something that's very valuable to our mechanics staff. Cool. Thank you so much for your patience. That's it for me. Thank you, Deanna. Charles, you're muted. Yeah, Madam Chair, it sounds like it, uh, there's a lot of things where we can decide what we want to see, what we don't want to see, explanations and such we can start, we can settle in the workshop we're going to have. So, uh, barring further questions, uh, I call the question and call the vote. Thank you. Um, we're not approving, we're just going to enter the financials into the record. Thank so, we'll give you a vote. Okay. But thank you, Charles. Okay. okay. Is there anything else before we do move on to the, hey Mary, will you just enter the financials? Mm -hmm. Thank you. No. All right. Um, next on our list, we're going to number 10A, Board Election Certification Presentation. Can you have those right? Okay. There, 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 okay. This is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to pass them out. Tracy, Tracy, Um, it's just, it's, it just says, um, enclosed certificate of election forms for the candidates elected on May 16th of a regular district election. And we need to make sure, do you, you make sure that the county knows when we change everything. So if there's any changes in your contact information, <coughs> let Mary know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for writing. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to continued business 10B. Can be RLS report. Well, here it is. I hope you all uh, found this riveting reading, maybe not the most pleasant, but uh, I, I personally view this document as um, our salvation, if you will. It kind of points out uh, things in black and white that need attention, places we need to pay more attention, processes we need to look more closely at. Um, you know, I as soon as we received this, I asked Debbie if we couldn't send it out to you right away because there was a lot of reading involved and I, and I hope all of you took some time to go through it. And I'm kind of counting on the fact that you might have some areas of particular in, uh, interest, each of you or something that caught your attention that you might want to discuss as a board that maybe staff could help uh, give you some input on. Tracy. I, um, the only real question that I have is um, the, the lack of awareness that the board had with the incident involving the elderly gentleman in the parking lot filmed and videotaped. If if I was aware of what had happened in my previous training as a person who assists people who are elderly and disabled, 
Mr. Hazen has been out the door a lot quicker. Yeah. So I don't understand where where did it come from? I mean, where did they get it all of a sudden? So when they were doing their interviews, somebody must have had knowledge of that and let the group that was doing the interviews know about it. When, when was this? Do we have a date? I don't have a date. I know from reading this that I'm, and from the things that we have heard since Jeff has been gone, how he overall treated the staff. And we were not aware of that. There would have been, things would have been different. I think uh, one thing, what I would like to see is somehow that the board, let me put it another way, that the employee staff feel comfortable with the board that they can tell us things like that. Um, and apparently some did not, do not. So that, that needs to be changed. I'm not sure how, but I'll just speak for myself. You could speak to me anytime, not quite anywhere, but. Uh, and that, that gets into a sticky thing too, because we only have authority over the director. But as far as listening, listen, to somebody. All I'm saying is listening. Obviously, and it's really touchy for an employee to, I don't like the word, criticize the executive director. <laughs> they can lose their jobs. We lose nothing. So I'm just offering that to as a board member that you can talk to us it will be kept confidential and it will be presented to to be re hopefully resolved the other avenue they do have also they could talk to their union rep and their union rep could bring it forward also but not all of them are union no no each how about HR? Like yeah, if they HR. went for the HR department and could the HR officer talk to us because it seems like the, the more that we uh, find out it was like the reign of terror and it just breaks my heart yep. that there was no viable way for the employees to actually get it not un until someone did make a fuss and we know how that went um one of the suggestions that the board and evidently, what is the number, like 45, 47, we're, we were close oh, to the number, the EEO yeah. committee. That requires an EEO committee, right? So they've suggested that we go ahead and set up one anyway, and it's not HR, it's kind of an individual that's really um, neutral. That And I have, we have to look into the program a little bit more and see exactly how to set it up, that employees could go to that person because it would be totally a neutral per person. It wouldn't be management. I'm not sure exactly how it <coughs> sets yeah. up. And then we could find- And that person could, could talk to us. Yeah. And we wouldn't be, because it's difficult as a board commissioner, we're not supposed to directly go and engage the employees. So that, yeah, it's, it's hard for it's us hard. to know how we can stay within our legal uh, uh, role. Well, Rebecca, I'll get right to you in just a second. I promise. Um, and now, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it, is, it is hard for them to come to the board and and talk about what's going on. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I was going within the, our evaluations. I've heard that they were even worried about filling out an evaluation because they were afraid that we would be able to or somebody would be able to figure out who filled out that evaluation if it was really kind of more truthful than maybe what we were getting yeah rebecca uh thank you yeah i i think that this is a really valuable uh document for us um i'm looking forward to us getting a framework around how we're going to uh, address these issues one by one and uh, the best manner so that, you know, we get a, a, 
a clean slate, you know, the next time we get the this kind of a review. Uh, the things that came up for me were, of course, the um, that the financials, you know, we need a more uh, uh, clarification and also we need, um, you know, board, uh, better board training. And also, you know, when, as we reviewed um, other um, elected officials um, from special districts or city councils, you know, um, anecdotally I've asked people, you know, what they've uh, kind of training they received and it was much more extensive than we have um, been provided. And so that there's uh, also some work that we need to do is to uh, improve on that. Uh, the, you know, the overviews and uh, as new board members come in. I also, you know, since I served on the um, executive director's review committee, um, that was also, you know, was kind of this perfect storm because some issues really popped up on that review of Mr. Hazen. And we were beginning to talk about how we might address those issues um, policy wise, you know, as pertaining, uh, we, you know, we're not uh, policy makers on the executive director's management procedures, but we are on his or her uh, performance. And so, you know, uh, definitely for me, it, I, what really was um, at issue was about the um, performance of Mr. Hazen's um, management of with the le leadership team and kind of the lack of, of um, follow through on that on his part. So, um, I, I think that we, we need to protect, we, we need to ensure the protection of the staff and uh, the public, though that's something, uh, another item that was important to me. And I think also that we need to um, improve on employee satisfaction and by getting, making it very important, the input and the access that, that uh, staff employees have in order to get the help that they need. And, you know, uh, also, you know, with whistleblowing, uh, that there is a clear uh, pathway for people to express concerns uh, and that those concerns are heard. But this, I think this is a very good document. It's very sobering, uh, but it gives us a, a pathway to where we need to go from here. Thank you. Deanna? So there were a few recommendations on things that needed to be implemented, needed to be included on our policies, the way that we uh, function. So who is in charge of implementing that? Would it be our uh, interim executive director, our new executive director when we hire them, or is it up to the board to do that? Because there are some that are that we need to uh, like submit to ODOT for review and approval. So, so the I would assume under the Board of Commissioners' recommendations, we need to work on those. The board does. Okay. Um, after that, I know the interim director should be starting to work on the ones that Paul can get started, and then it will turn over to the new director when we get the new director on to finish those. Okay. There are certain things that I don't want to mess with right now if we have a new person coming on i think mm -hmm. it would be good for that person to be able to establish their management style and management environment but anything that needs immediate attention that's what i'm here for okay. if there's something you need to do i'll certainly take care of it thank you okay. okay pamela also oh, i'm sorry oh. charles oh go ahead okay charles go ahead I didn't get to read it all the report. I was traveling, uh, so I briefed the report. I think that um, we should keep in mind as we hire the new executive director that um, we are aware of this. We know what we know what the RS report says, and so we need to our questions and and our sort of uh, discussion with the new 
executive director will have these in mind, some of these things in mind, all of them in mind, and maybe pose questions to the new ED about their management style to see if any of these are, are congruent with what we've seen here on this report and let them know that uh, without saying that this is from the report, things that we don't want, we don't see that are valuable in an ED, and we don't expect that out of a new ED. I think we can have this information and have it in mind so that the new ED understands what is expected of them without necessarily telling them about this report or, or throwing this in their face because they really have no control over this report because it happened before they got to it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pamela, did you have just um I also was on the evaluation committee and how it works, which I would like, is that people on the committee choose whose voices are heard. I would like to propose that all voices should be heard. And if you have an outliner, maybe that's the person who has the courage to say something because each employee's job is at stake. And maybe this should be an outside uh, person that actually does all. We can work on the actual app, um, putting together the report. Right. And uh, to do that, and hopefully we're in a better financial position because in any organization, the fear of being fired is very high. And the bits and pieces that I found out very late, too late. Um, what is going on is horrifying, and I don't want to see that continue happen again, rather, with the new uh, director, so that we can make their questionnaires helpful to them to change things. Thank you. That's a good idea. Thank you, Pamela. Tracy? Mine is a, and a small suggestion about expenses and training expenses. Um, uh, my wife uh, does a two week check on expenses um, and she is uh, independent in her um, monitoring of that and reporting so that the executive director, like we were in June, we're, we're, we're sitting there with no money and we have employees turning in expense accounts in excess of $1,400. We need better control on that. So we need a lot of, we need a lot of training and control. On that. So that's my suggestion. Hello? No possible since we're in a financial situation is to perhaps limit Put a limit right now, I mean, not this moment, of what can be charged in the credit card. And after that, it would have to go maybe through some channels, the board or management, but go through a process of why you, let's say if you did $500, I'm suggesting that, and then you go over um, that you can expedite it quickly, but there still needs to be approval over a certain amount. Like credit card limits, right? That is, and, that has and maybe been in place. that has been in place. You know, there has been a limit. Yeah. There is a limit. Yeah, for getting approval. Okay. And it, we, have, we have limits on a credit card. What's the limit on the credit card? It was was well, nine thousand? Yours was three thousand because you do travel. Mm -hmm. I pay for the up for, yeah, yeah. for training, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and what's and I know Paul's the executive director. Currently, I think it's, well, I don't know, half a card now, but the executive director was four or five. Five, it was five. And the other card holders? I know that we pulled all the cards back. Two or three thousand. Was, so I who, thought it was who has a credit card now? Which employees? I don't know. Executive assistant. Oh, we were told not to use it. Right. Jennifer. Jason. Sue. So, the fees that came in, you know, we were had already. Yeah, charge. We did right. once we found out. So it was not using credit cards now. No. Okay, and there was a, a suggestion yes. somewhere. I bought something Safeway. I did it Safeway for the meeting. 
about consolidating where you buy your supplies? And we started to try to, um, so like Stephanie was getting ready to place an order in August, and I had asked her to look. Normally we order through um, Office Depot, but I'd asked her to look like on Amazon, and you get that same thing on Amazon for less money. And so to try to do those kinds of things. But moreover, we, there are state, state price contracts that we need to look into too, but we haven't done that. I'm sorry, what did you say? So, so, what did so like you? when I worked at the DA's office, because we were a government agency, the county had an agreement with Office Depot and got supplies for like so much less than anybody else could. And we can have gone through the state to do that. 50% off. Yeah, it oh, was. I ordered it was. It was really a big discount, and so if we could work with maybe Arlen, can you help us with that a little bit? So or at um, least get us to the right person. The directory of uh, stores or providers that would give us more. So I know Staples and like Office Depot are part of it. Um, there's a lot of different state price agreements, and it's on Oregon buys, which used to be called Oracle. Um, yeah. And you go in there and search for price agreements of the item that you're going to be needing. Also, I think I talked to Jennifer about um, like Columbia County does like a, a floor model type thing on like batteries and nuts and bolts that they use a lot of. And you don't get charged for it until you use it instead of having to run to, no offense, Tracy, but Home Depot all the time yeah. for a nut and bolt here and there because you're not going to get a discount price from Home Depot. No. Can we take a five minute break? Yeah, I think. Uh, excuse me, I, I wanted to comment on that. Oh, sorry. I have to Go ahead, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I also want to. Uh, mentioned that, you know, the executive director's discretion on deciding what kinds of um, activities, I mean, I, I can't, it would be more useful for me to just, you know, state a, a realistic uh, uh, expenditure with the, from Mr. Hazen, who, uh, although, you know, his um, efforts with the returning citizen program uh, were, um, were good, um, I think there was a lot of uh, travel on his part in order to participate in those um, activities. And um, also the expenditures on equipment and, you know, and also and, and other, you know, uh, travel. I, I'm not sure where that really fits in with us as a board, but, you know, I think we should have some kind of, um, say on this really I don't know where that would fit in for us to to talk about that so that um, you know certainly while our we're getting ourselves financially solvent in the in the near future and with our new executive director how are we going to um, be able to talk about these things and not have that be at the the director's total discretion as to how to the uh, spend those monies. And that's a qu actual question. If anybody has any thoughts on that, can I speak to that? Sure. Uh, you know, you, you have a, a unique opportunity here that you're hiring a new executive director, and you need to make, as, as uh, Charles was saying, you need to make your expectations as a board clear to whomever you, you bring on board. Uh, and those expectations have to include the type of transparency that you expect from the staff. Uh, and you have to also realize that you will have many more tools at your disposal. Hopefully while I'm here, there's enough transparency that you get a better vision of what's going on and with the workshops that helps you. But you'll be in a position uh, to work with this new director and have some understandings about how the money is managed. If you're on the budget committee and the budget committee approves a budget and you agree with it, that's the budget. And it's the executive director's responsibility to operate the district within that budget. You'll know, even from what you see today, I hope you have a feeling that you'll know 
much more currently exactly what the conditions are. Um, I don't think that it's going to get away from you again. Uh, I, I don't know that uh, some of the controls we have in place right now are probably adequate. They just weren't enforced and you weren't aware of them. And sometimes you, know, you were only given a part of the story. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't see how you would ever let that happen. Thank so, you. I, I think that's that's something that we're, we definitely need to do. Absolutely. Pamela? Yeah, I thought there was a mention in the report that to um, focus just on in-state travel, maybe you could have, <clears throat> if it's out of state, then it's approved by the board. That's pretty clear cut, I think, because that's a big amount of money. Yeah. When sometimes it's paid by the conference, uh, but it, it should also have that stated. Thank you. Anything else on the RLS report? Yes. Um, if we're done with the RLS report. Just to set a priority maybe of uh, what, what we should do. Okay, all right. We'll take a short break. Um, Rebecca? Yes? Um, you're not muted. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. You're welcome.
calling the meeting back to order at 11 10. And the one thing that we did kind of miss a little bit was the um, new board members. Okay, the newly elected board members need to be sworn in again, also. So Paul has graciously said he would do that for us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, Deanna, myself, and Tracy. All right. I'll clap very loudly while we get along. Come on up here. Who are these people? I don't know. Just strangers, Charles. Just strangers. <laughs> just, just folks. I don't know any of these people. <laughs> And after I say I, you say your name. Do we raise our right hands? I, I Tracy McDonald, Debbie Bushman, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I do solemnly swear, swear that, that I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution of, of the United States. States of America and the Constitution and laws of the state of Oregon. Of America, America and the and laws and constitution, constitution of Oregon. And that I will faithfully and honorably conduct myself. And that and I will faithfully and honorably conduct myself. In the office of Sunset Empire Transportation District Commissioner position. In the, can you say it again? <laughs> In the Office of Sunset Empire Transportation District. In the Office of Sunset Empire Transportation District. Commission position number one. Commission position number seven. Commission district number five. To which I have been appointed. To which, to which I have been, appointed. been appointed. To the best of my ability. To, to the, the best, best of my ability. ability. So help me God. So, so help me God. God. Congratulations. <laughs> Again, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, number 11, new business. A is our committee assignments. And the first one we have is the Transportation Advisory Committee. And... Deanna, is that the one you're on? Correct. And you do part of that for your work also? You have to be there for your... No. Job. Um, I, I started as part of the committee as, yeah, like as a oh. representative, but ever since I became a board commissioner, I represent the board. Like, oh, so yeah. It's, okay, separate. Charles, you had your hand up. You're muted still. Are these positions you appoint, Madam Chair, or do we we vote on someone for these? Chairs? I, I, appoint, she, she I appoint them. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, is there? You do a great job. Do you want to continue? Is there somebody else that would like to? Yeah, I'm okay to continue unless somebody else would want to take over. I don't see anybody jumping up and down. You do a great job. Thank you. All right. So we're going to leave Deanna on that. And then we have the Executive Director Evaluation and Compensation Committee. That committee, I like to kind of rotate through the board members. Um, and I will stay on that one, but I would also like to appoint Deanna this year and Guillermo. And Guillermo said that he would be happy to be on that committee. So well, and I like the idea of going to an outside person to put those reports together, and I think that's the way we're going to go this year. And then the next one is the Northwest Area Commission on Transportation, and Tracy, you have been on that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I would suggest um, having witnessed the meeting uh, last uh, that I was on Zoom for. I would propose that um, Debbie would step in in that place. And if 
there's also an executive position in there and the executive director is usually positioned there and i'm not sure our interim director is interested in doing that but i'd rather to... focus on the more uh, okay and so uh, i would things. i would like to suggest that that we appoint our chairperson as the permanent committee uh, uh, district board representative and I will step back to the executive position uh, subject to, to replacing um, when we get our replacement executive director and and I personally would like to take over that position with the way things are going and it was a wonderful meeting the other day that's all I'm saying about it. not Okay, so I will take over that and Tracy will take the executive position on that until we have a new executive director. Director, And that takes care of our committee assignments for this year. Um, our, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, if we were to uh, add any committees, what would be the procedure for that? Um, I don't, you know, there, um, there's, uh, been some talk about a, a policy committee or is that just a, an ad hoc and it would just be, we have ad hoc committees that, that, uh, we, um, pull together as needed. Yeah. And that's on my list of things to get done as soon as possible this year. So we will be getting into policies here before long. Okay. Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, okay, so now moving on to 11B, the November, December meeting date. We always combine those two months. Um, everybody should have brought their calendar, so for me. <laughs> I wanted to propose November 30th, which is the last Thursday in November. We have four this, we have five this year. Oh. For the combination, yeah, November, December, the November, and then not have a meeting in December. Correct. Everybody I think that's an excellent suggestion. Good right? for you. Yeah. Rebecca, Charles, what's your calendars looking like for the thirtieth? Thirtieth uh, of November. Yes. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay. Charles. You're muted. Is this an all day, a few hours, or? Just a regular meeting. A regular meeting? Yeah. Oh, okay, we're changing, I understand. No, no problem, no problem. With two months of financials. <laughs> well, no, not yet. No, 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 we know the regulars are January. 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 I'm good with that. Shall we have a problem? Are you doing I would so that? moved that okay. we uh, Tracy adopt Rose. that as uh, November 30th, regular time. Okay, in a second. I second it. Pamela seconds. And do you want to do a roll call on that or just does anybody have disagree with that? All right, it passes. All, All in. Yay! Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't I remember we had some marathon times about that. We, we're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> so then, the next on our list is our holiday party, which we usually have. And Mary, do you want to take that over? Do you want to do that one? Sure. Um, I just wanted to get a feel. <laughs> if we were going to even pursue that because of our financial situation. Um, it is funded by the district usually. There's different funds that go into it, but it, it you know, the meal is pretty expensive to, to go out. So we can look at, I just kind of want to know ahead of time if we're looking at something, some place I need to reserve, or if we would have it like we often do out in operations and have a potluck, something like that where we keep the cost down and kind of still get together. So just with the- hey, Charles, do you have any good ideas? I like the idea of, Mary said, a potluck style meal, maybe at our own facility that we don't have to rent. 
and perhaps not giving away the gifts. I think that's a that's a nice gesture, but I think pursuant to what we're dealing with now, that we keep it make it more homey, more look more in house, and everyone bring sort of everyone bring a dish type event, and uh, and decide maybe if the, the the district wants to bring something as a district. But I would think we we should low key it and make it more in house. But I, I agree we should have it. I think it's good, it's good community and fellowship between the district and, this, and the board and such. So I think we should not, not have it though. We've had a potluck in this room as well for Christmas before when our, and, and with you, we have a small amount of employees now, it, it would fit here as well if we didn't want to have it off, so. so. Um, any other discussion? I think that's a great idea. Uh, we could still do the Christmas exchange if we wanted to do that. The yeah, gift exchange or whatever it is, white elephants or whatever it is. We could still do that. And maybe a couple of games. Who knows? Yeah. I think that sounds like a good idea. We can. I think there's a little more room at Ops. Yeah, but we have 15 employees now. If they all showed up with a partner, that would be 30, so that would be a little bit squishy in here. Where is it easiest for the employees to show up? If we did it in the evening, though. Yeah. After hours, so that everybody can participate. Yeah. Um, probably ops, because it's a little bit halfway between Astoria and Cannon, or, well, Cannon Beach, Seaside, so it would be a little bit closer for the South County people. Is yeah. there enough room there? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah I really like this facility for the Christmas thing. You know, yeah, me too. You could open the door there to the lobby and be after hours with the food in this next room okay. here. You have the table set up in here. If there were 30 people, and I don't think that there would be, not everybody's going to come, right. not everybody's going to bring a plus one. So if you've got 20 or 25 people, you could do it here. It it's was nice. Big. This is easier to decorate, cozy, easier to yeah. heat. Yeah, it was cozy. It was not much more cozy than it is when we here. had it here. It's cold. And yeah, this is exactly true. that. We had the table set up in here for eating. Yeah. But we actually put the food out there on that on that because it could come from the back. Oh the yeah, that'd be great. To, and then and then the bar could be in. Charles, did you have your hand up? Yeah, my, my vote would be for the transit district facility. It just okay. sort of makes the building look like we're 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 up and running, you know. The appearances look better. The the uh the facility open warranton is sort of out of the way and back in back in a corner and this sort of is out front and it's cleaner. <laughs> Warmer. That is it. I'm going to put the warmer in the warm. Okay, that, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good with that. And if we do open up the three rooms now, that would give us enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a thought. I could actually clean out the Christmas decoration closet. There's. <laughs> All right. So we have the holiday party okay. taken care of. Great. Thank, Thank you. The day. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary will come up with the date. Okay. Yeah. I guess Mary's in charge. Well, yeah. I'm not really in charge, but, but you, it's just going to be a Saturday in December. And usually, we'll say the earliest, the better. So I'm going to say December 9th right now. And if you can't do that, then let me That's know. Good. Yeah, because the earlier, the better. Everybody always has something to do mm -hmm. later in the month. And there's so many community things. So the second or the ninth, I'm good, I'm good for the month. I think, I think the ninth is OK. Can I, hey, Rick? Yes, Charles. Six. Three of us have a Christmas party in December already. Could I look at that to make sure there's no conflict and call me? There's, there's not. There isn't? Okay. Mary Becca's ahead of me. Okay. okay. Thanks, Charles. That's right. I forgot about those. Um, okay. For the, for the Christmas holiday party. party. Ho holiday party. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to, we have two grants to approve. So we're on the... Um, 5310 grant, which came in your packet. And I'm going to let 
you or Arla, I who wants to talk about the 53 grant, 5310 grant. Fill in the blanks. What do you have? 5310, that's the word 5310, yes. is a reimbursement grant for uh, mobility and preventative maintenance. Yes. Two, the two flavors that go well together for some reason. Uh, this, is a, this is the money that uh, Kelly files for reimbursement each quarter. Uh, and these grants, both of these grants have been redefined slightly to better reflect our anticipated needs in our financial situation. So uh, this 5310 will help us um, recover some of our expenses for preventative maintenance and it will cover our uh, mobility management program. Things to make sure they know that we work it so where it'll cover the mobility manager's salary. Okay. And okay. the program combined. Okay. So uh, the grant will cover mobility, mobility manager uh, salary uh, and the program itself. Okay. So we'll be putting on another program for that mobility? Yes. Okay. Which Jason has been doing anyway, yeah. still yeah. helping okay. people, you know, find route, you know, how to catch the bus and stuff like that. So, okay. Which he's done an excellent job with. Yes. yes. Okay. And, okay. So, just so I understand, the 360,178, that's. That's for the biennium. For two years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And the state shall provide a receipt, but we shouldn't. The state's not going to provide more than three hundred twenty-three thousand hundred eighty-seven. Is that the top? And then we match the rest of it. Yes. So we have to match, um, provided we use the entire funds in the grants. We would need to match thirty-six thousand nine hundred ninety-one of those dollars. Okay. And that match is built into the STIF. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that where it's coming from? Then? Yes. Between STIF and property taxes. Yes. And the same probably. Okay. <laughs> Point of order, then. Yes. Um, should we ask? We should make a motion that yeah. we approve. Oh, yes. We should make a motion that we uh, approve, and I so move that we make motion and approval. Grant Agreement 35486 of the 53 for fiscal year 24 and uh, authorized board chair to sign. But we would be approving it for the biennium or only for one year? For the biennium. It's a biennium. So then we get for, so do we, uh, I'm sorry, so do we vote for the fiscal year 2024 or for the July 1st, 23 to June 30, 25? For the whole money, okay. you agree. You're, you're approving. You're approving the agreement, which yeah. is for the whole money. Right. Okay. We, we need a second. We do need a second. Um, a second. Okay, Rebecca seconded. So, okay. Any other discussion? Any other questions of anybody? Okay, if there's no other discussion, Mary, would you take, um, do the roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Boosman? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Nino? Yes. Commissioner Allegria? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Romero is excused. Motion passed. Okay, thank you. And then our added agenda item is to approve and give the board chair permission to sign the grant 5311. And that was just handed out this morning because we just received that. Uh, 
Uh, I would entertain a motion. <laughs> And I don't seem to have it either, Mary. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I had it. I don't know where it went. It's okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was me coming out. Okay, I have a motion and a second, so we can discuss this one. We give people a few minutes to look at it. And I'm going to ask the same question. This is a two year. Yes. And we would get the one million five hundred fifty thousand and match. Is there matching? Yes. Eight hundred seventy four thousand one hundred and eighty six dollars. So this grant has a different um, match than the fifty three ten. It's at forty. Where's the web page is going on? It's like four hundred twenty two. It's not. It's, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a fifty percent match. She's got a copy. So page one. I'm looking at page 11. 11. Oh, 11. 11. I'm looking at page 11. That shows the price. It just shows the breakdown. Yeah. Oh, okay. 11 and 22. Yeah. That's almost, yeah, almost a 50% match. That's a really high match. It's a very high match. Operations has a higher match. Yeah. Where does that come from? It comes from our from stiff funding and the, the match comes from stiff funding and property taxes and timber revenue. So with the two agreements combined, that is a lot of money to match. And I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned about doing that match, paying our loan and then actually functioning. May I, may I make a comment? I made sure that when, and John Dreesen also helped as well with Kelly, that we made sure that the mat, the big bulk of the match was covered in STIF formula plans, which goes in front of the OTC again in September for the revised STIF formula plan. Um, but the match is covered. There's only a slight bit. What is it, Kelly? It's is maybe it's a hundred not, thousand yeah it's not a huge amount that comes from the taxes the taxes so it's not a, a big amount coming from your property taxes <clears throat> or timber tax it's mostly covered by the stiff formula and stiff formula does not have a match mm -hmm. so in the stiff formula there is operations which kind of covers all the operations that you do as a transit district it also has the like i said the match in there um, I can't remember. Admin. And it has some admin in there. Admin, admin the OTIP loan. Right. And then set aside for two years of the, the full mil. If you guys took the full million, the repayment for two years, which will have to be added to the next dip if it's not paid off, which I'm sure it probably won't be unless you guys make a great windfall. Um, the, the next two years in the STIF formula will need to be. So John and I sat down prior to um, budget, or as we were doing budget, um, and went over the money that we would be receiving from STIF, along with the money that we would be receiving from grants, and what we needed to do for our match piece of it, <coughs> um, and basically mapped it out to see, okay, we we get, this is how much our reimbursement is, and this is how much we need to match. And we literally spread, used a spreadsheet to see where those funds need to come from in order for us to have the correct amount to be able to match everything. So we, yeah, we Thank sat you. And, and did that. But yeah, most of it does come from stiff funding. Pamela? It's okay uh, to mention to the public that this grant and the mobility grant uh, specifically it cannot be used for delivery of 
transit groups mean statement in transit groups. Say that one more time. Okay, maybe I'll get their exact. Um, not, okay, not direct, directly related to providing transit services, but which support the effective, efficient, safe delivery of those services. So I understand that, and maybe I'm wrong. We cannot, this money cannot be used to reinstate. That's, that's under project administration. Yeah. So and if you go down to the next paragraph where it says operations, it can be to provide the service. Yeah. This agreement provides funding to recipients to provide demand response, APA compliant paratransit and fixed route in the cities of Astoria, Orange, and Gerhardt, Seaside, Cannon Beach. What is it? Page 11 of 20. So that means all the public, not just related to the specific. Uh, right. Okay, great. Make sure of that. Um, so, yes. <laughs> okay. I'll go. That's my note. I'll go. Any other discussion? Any other questions? Mary, you want to take a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Nino? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Romero is excused. Motion passes. Thank, thank you, you Arla. Yeah, and I wanted to say thank you, Arla, too, because these uh, grant requests were all drafted before there was a problem. And in that interim, uh, Arla stepped in and, and edited them edited them to be more responsive to our particular needs for this coming year and, and, and took, the, took the, the job on her shoulders to do so. Thank you. And a lot of time. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And I just wanted to clarify that we did in, uh, also have the board chair authorization to sign. I think that was in the motion. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's for the other. I just want to make sure it was yeah. for, yes. for both. Okay. Who made the motion for this? Yeah, who, did, who did make the motion? I don't think we did. Rebecca made the motion. Yeah, Rebecca made the motion. Rebecca made the motion. Tracy, who seconded the motion? I second it. Okay, thank you. I didn't get I didn't get us to that. Just want to make sure. Excuse me. And I would like to also take this time to thank Arla for all the help she has given us. Thank and you. I appreciate it more than you probably know. So lucky to have you here. Yes. So lucky. Okay, so we've got both of the agreements taken care of. We're down to correspondence. And we do have one letter. Do you want to read it, Paul? Oh, do I have it? Yeah. I have it. I have it right here. <laughs> this yes. is from Eric, and he kind of wanted this read, so I will let Paul read it. Yes, he did. Eric, Eric, of course, is our sunset or the seaside transit office staff. Hello, it is with mixed feelings that I write this letter today, Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. I'm writing to formally notify Sunset Empire Transportation staff and management that I will be no longer an employee of the district. I have accepted a position with Providence Seaside Hospital as a patient service specialist, effective July 10th, 2023. I look forward to this new opportunity. It is not at all lost on me or where I got my start and my 18 years of success with SETD. I will always be grateful for the strong foundation I received with the district. I would also like to express my heartfelt thanks to all the co-workers for all the support and love and care shown to me. You will never be far from my heart and thoughts moving forward. I look forward to continuing to work with staff and riders who use the bus in my new role with the hospital whenever needed. I will be in contact with paratransit, continuing to be an active rider as soon as possible to set a routine to my new work schedule. I also need to set a time in the near future to retrieve some of my personal belongings left at the Seaside office. 
Again, thank you. It has been a pleasure working with you and an honor and a privilege to serve our community as a dedicated transportation professional. Best wishes for a successful future. You will be sorely missed, Eric. Yes. <laughs> He's already started work. He loves it. Yeah. And it's all good. Yeah, it's That's real good. He's happy. Well, nice. Thank you, Eric. That was a very nice letter. And I think I can speak for the whole board. We all wish you the best. Charles? Seems like it's a deja vu, like I've heard this letter before, but maybe I haven't. Uh, but I, I would like to say that I dealt with Eric regularly in, in Seaside and someone who is more, po I've never met anyone more positive and more upbeat and more willing to serve than Eric. And he had physical, obviously physical issues, but he never let that shade his, 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 his enthusiasm and his desire to do a great job. So I'm, I wish him well as he, he moves forward. Thank you, Charles. I'd like to say, um, you know, if there's a opportunity, shall we create an opportunity to, as a board to send him a, a well wishes letter? Would that be appropriate? Definitely do that. Okay. Would you like to be in charge of that? Sure. Like, you're a great writer. <laughs> okay, I'd be happy to do it. Maybe you could use some of your calligraphy, right? Calligraphy, okay. <laughs> we'll do. Thank you, Rebecca. If I might, I think I would frame it as a response to his letter. Yeah. Uh, so that no one else feels left out. Yeah. Absolutely. Feel. Right. Okay. Uh, we're down to number 13, which is our executive director report. Um, we also have another, of course, one. Okay. No, okay. Executive director report. Oh boy, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, certainly been an interesting time, a rewarding time, an educational time, a time of discovery. Uh, I've tried to capture most of the uh, things that I've done in the last month here in this report. Um, beyond that, and, and more recently, uh, as has been mentioned a couple of times, we were successful in getting uh, another draw from our loan, which will uh, support our uh, operations through the beginning of September. Through the beginning of September, in case anybody was to send step money, you can tell, got to be before the beginning of September. Um, we, uh, as Debbie had mentioned, we have been in conversation with some of the city leaders who want to get involved and, and they're not sure how, but there seems like there might be a little funding that they can throw into the mix and we might be able to uh, leverage uh, one or two additional fixed routes subsidized by the cities, uh, which would be great. Uh, Kelly and Jennifer and I will come up with what it actually costs us to, to run around uh, and we'll build the agreements around that if we get that far. One of the uh, advantages that we have with where we are right now financially is that we have most of our financial or our administrative support already on board. So if we were going to run another route, we only have to pay for the driver, uh, his or her benefits, fuel, uh, and the operational costs of the bus itself. Uh, so it, it may be more doable even than it seems right now. So I'm encouraged uh, about that. Anything, any other questions, any curiosities? Possibly, possibly some of the uh, um, operational costs, um, which we, previously talked about would be maybe the cities and or county could provide us a place to set the bus in a different location and then we our operational costs have the driver report to that location to pick up the bus which would keep our costs down it's a very good idea mm -hmm. charles would the cannabis route be the 20 route or would it be extension of the 101 
every day. My thoughts at this point is it would be a separate route of its own. Um, as, as we all know, whatever we stand up as a route needs to be a regularly scheduled fixed service route open to the public uh, for our regular fare. So 20 would cut. The 20 would qualify for that, right? I'm sorry, say that again, Charles. The 20, the 20 route would cover for that. The 20 would qualify for that. But you know, what we're really trying to do here is to take our limited resources, whether they're ours or the city's, and use them where they uh, benefit our ridership the most. And in Kennedy Beach right now, their, their big need is to have uh, transportation for workers who either live in Cannon Beach and work other places or live uh, north and work in Cannon Beach. And so the question will be, does it make sense for us to run that route all day long or a split route just morning and afternoon, a few loops in order to you know, facilitate that. But ideally to take the 101 off of that segment to Cannon Beach would probably with no more expense Free up, free up enough runtime to add another loop to the one of one, uh, which we really, really need. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, Paul. Yes. Okay. Any other questions for Paul? Just a comment that it's a, it's great that the temporary employees this is working well and that they're everybody's kind of being able to take some time off and not overworking our employees so that's great yeah. overtime yeah the drivers aren't overworking i'm not so sure about the staff out of the yeah. operations i know that they're <laughs> they're very early and they're staying late and they're covering long bases so mm -hmm. I applaud them for that and sue farmer would be next but i hear she's on vacation she can judgment right now. So <laughs> I had I had a question on her report that maybe uh, Paul can answer. Sure. So then on the on her third bullet point, it said work with several laid off employees experiencing difficulty receiving their funds from Court Bridge. What is that? Well, Court Bridge is the firm that somehow took over ADI, which somehow was an umbrella over Valley. So corporate now is who uh, employees need to deal with to do anything with their retirement fund. The retirement fund. Yeah. And I went through it myself so I can speak firsthand <laughs> that it's, it's difficult to fill out the forms appropriately, submit them to corporate and expect uh, a check on your first try. Wow. It, it took me uh, it took me two months and five submissions in order for them to finally send me wow. uh, a partial withdrawal and other employees are finding the same situation uh, i don't know why i don't know exactly what we can do with it short change our our fund manager and i don't think that's something that should be done lightly but that's what that refers to wow Okay, I hope it I hope it works out. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I've always been thankful for Standard Insurance Company when I have my retirement plan. They were on the ball. And Nicole, she's on Zoom. We have her report. I don't know if she's available if she has time or wants to add anything. May be busy out there. She thinks she's running all of operations by herself this morning. Oh, okay. All right. Good morning. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I just want to let you guys know that we are increasingly, paratransit is increasingly um, or daily getting more and more busy. Um, it's getting more and more difficult to um, schedule um, ride requests. Um, we're having to use the one hour before um, the time request to the one hour after, um, which is making some riders um, nervous, unhappy, 
um, I mean, they're understanding, but um, it's just making um, my day-to-day -day a little more difficult. Jason, you know, is helping out quite a bit. Um, Stephanie's helping out quite a bit. Um, hopefully here in the new near future, we can um, have another paratransit driver full-time um, that would help out so much. It's great having Kathy um, two to three days out of the week, but um, yeah, five days a week, three drivers would be amazing. It would really, really lift the pressure um, and get things flowing more smoothly. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, move on to Jason. Yeah, uh, before I open it up for questions, I want to kind of jump on what Nicole said a little bit and, and just kind of show you a picture. Just think of two drivers having to cover all of what the 101 covers, including the, you know, the canopy mm -hmm. stuff. And what she said, you know, the third driver, you would not believe the difference that it makes when 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 that when we do have that third driver, the two drivers. Imagine trying to cover three, four hundred miles a day and only getting twelve to fifteen rides because it's just impossible to, to help everyone. So, but yeah, she's she's definitely doing a heck of a job, you know, managing all that. So, but anyways, than that, any questions for me? This mine's kind of short and sweet this month. Okay. Thank you for all you did. Yeah. Thank you. Can I also add something else? Sure. So, so with with having um, you know just those two drivers, um, they're splitting about twenty five to thirty rides a piece um, on those days, and we're having to stay, you know, sir, sir, get those taken care of, those rides taken care of under eight hours is like nearly impossible. So that's an, another struggle, um, trying to schedule appropriately the writer's request and make sure that our drivers aren't getting overtime with also not denying any rides. <laughs> so there's a lot, it's, it's almost like trying to perform magic and it's almost impossible. So that's just what we've kind of been dealing with and not, not exhausting our drivers so they're not calling out at the end of the week or middle of the week because they're just exhausted right and i just want to add to that she makes it look easy you know because we're all, we're just humming over there just work and work and work and, and it looks easy so just from the outside looking in you, it's hard it's very very difficult to tell the, the challenges that they overcome all the time so yeah on our recent visits to the operations manager's office. She, the last thing she relayed to me was that one of the drivers, the AM driver, our shift had 102 passengers. That was for the 101. Yeah, yeah. the 101. So that's good. We're we're there is a there's a need for our service here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Well, I'll get with Jennifer when she gets back on Monday, and we'll take a look at the numbers, see if we can support uh, one more uh, paratransit driver. <laughs> Rebecca? Yeah, that was just my question, is that, you know, um, I'm sure that you guys have, um, Paul and others, you know, have a wish list and you're always working that wish list at all times, right? You know, yeah. for things about, you know, adding some loops. I mean, it's just this, this dance that you're doing, but for, uh, for Nicole's um, department, you know, it's, is it really about needing an additional driver on uh, adding another driver? Is that correct? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you know, I, I do I I'm very concerned myself about that prioritization slash wish list, you know, and how you know those things get get up to the top of the list, and and uh, so we're able to you know add services or or whatever. But um, you know, I appreciate that you guys are doing the best you can with that. Thank you. 
Charles? Yeah, I'd like to uh, reiterate what Rebecca said. I believe, uh, I'm sure Nicole is, is working with the uh, temporary executive director to uh, to get the to get that extra uh, those extra that extra driver extra help, and I'm assuming she's just reporting to us that they she's been in discussion with Paul and others already. So she's just bringing it to the board's attention, uh, which is yeah. which is I'm sure that's happened. But uh, I believe Paul acknowledges that he he's looking into this. So I feel confident we'll get this taken care of. Thank you, thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Okay. And then Jason, anything else with Jason? Kind of got caught up a little bit. Oh I I witnessed the uh, video, the last videos. The, oh yeah, your thank YouTube you, and, good. and uh, excellent. Yeah, done done well. Can we watch the transcript of this, please? Excellent. Call me out, <laughs> Charles. I didn't mean to butt in, but I I loved I like Jason's uh, Facebook videos, by uh, Instagram videos, by the way. They are they're very upbeat and positive, and whose ever idea that was is a superb idea. So if you hadn't seen them, you can get them on Instagram. <laughs> okay, um, Mary. Um, I really don't have much to say except um, that, that that's over. No. <laughs> are you caught up with minutes besides yeah. today? Yeah, today. Oh, okay. is it? Is that, yeah, today was the day we got caught up with minutes. But yes, I, I'm a obviously an old guy trying to understand uh, social media. Actually, I see them on YouTube. It might be on Instagram, so I don't want to send someone in the wrong direction. I see them on YouTube. So just to clear that up. Thank you. That helps me because I don't do Instagram or Facebook, but I can find YouTube. So <laughs> directly on YouTube, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's where I saw them, Charles. <laughs> And I want to thank Mary for all the hard work she's put in in the thank last, you, it's only been about a month, month and a half. Just, um, yeah. I mean, I know all the employees are working hard, um, but Mary's been really good about getting yes. things in order Scheduled, and done sent and knowledge. documented, keeping me updated on what needs to be done. Yeah, I was going to say keeping me on schedule too. Things I would overlook otherwise. And it is really nice to see her in the office. Yeah. So, and I think it's a different office. I think we understand some of the reasons for that. So, when I spend a lot of time over at my store. When I see her car over here, it's just like, yay, Mary's around. And so, thank you. Glad <laughs> yeah, to be here. It's great. It was good. It was really good. And then the last one is Jennifer, and she's out today also. Jennifer is taking some mandatory uh, drug right. and alcohol training oh. since uh, Sue is out of the country and couldn't attend. Uh, Jennifer's doing that for the district. This is not drinking drugs and alcohol. This is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm glad you said training. Is that a winery? Is that a winery? It's a good place for them. <laughs> and I know she's been working really hard to try to make sure that we're staying on budget and getting as many rights in as we can. Yeah. Let, let me just, to, oh, yes. in order to give you some more confidence here in what our planning is, what we're really looking for is to try and recognize our spending patterns over the first few months to ensure that we know what it's costing us per month to pay the bills, to do the utilities, to pay the employees, once we know what that is, then when there's a request like Nicole made this morning, or when we want to add another route, we'll have the data to say, this is how much money that we can afford to put into additional services. I, I would be afraid to do something right now, uh, although I'm going to do whatever I can for paratransit, but I'd be afraid to get committed to some service right now and find out three or four months from now that we can't sustain it and have to pull it back. Absolutely. So uh, once we know what that pattern is, you'll know what that pattern is, and maybe we can come to consensus about where we want to go. Okay. One more thing I want to add that it hasn't been on our agenda um, with Sue being out of town, and I haven't had a chance to touch bases with George, but the last report we had, we had four applications for the executive director position. So that was a little bit better than I expected. Um, so 
and it goes until the end of the month, so we have a few more days for that. Um, and I just wanted to repeat that I um, wanted to confirm it's the minus. Okay. And two, I'm giving you and Mary my cell phone, which I only answer when I'm traveling. So I put my travel dates, and you can call me on my landline to August 6th any time, any day. Okay. Okay, here. And so, I, ha I do have your cell number, so. Okay, don't call it afterwards. I know. And I know. I, I've tried it. And then I go, oh, yeah, she's the hard line person. Then more way for the morning. <laughs> if there's no objection. I have one thing. Oh, oh yes, Tracy. <laughs> um, two things to say. So I witnessed today. Kelly's I remembrance of in her previous occupation when I went to the bank. Kelly was the person that I went to. Kelly was the person that cleared the mess up. And Kelly was the person that um, my constituency at the bank and at the Salvation Army as the advisory board chair. Um, uh, I appreciate your efforts. And uh, let's, let us continue that. Second is that uh, there was discussion today that I uh, might suggest not being in my position. Um, I worked uh, in the Marine Corps for two commanding generals. Uh, one was a Mustanger uh, who uh, went up from the enlisted ranks. And he always told me that if things were bad, to climb to the ceiling, check out the things, clear your guns, and move back down. And I plan to do that in this next turn. The second general that I worked for, General Lang, uh, was, a, was a Navy in World War II, and he was the wingman for the president. And he did not leave or abandon his wing person when he was in the water. I'm doing the same for the district. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Okay. Any objections to adjourning at 12.01? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Charles and Rebecca. Talk to you soon. Good job, all. Yay.